Welcome to the Most Way Demo, May 30th, 2017. Um, I'm your host, Brent Cook. We're going to be talking about one of some of the awesome stuff that happened in the world of Metasploit the last couple of weeks. Um, first start of the demo presentation is going to be related to framework and related projects. Um, first of all, PR trends. Uh, we had about 24 pull requests per week over the last couple of weeks. We did a really great job of keeping the, uh, the pull request queue down, uh, merging things as they came in. I think we had uh, somewhere around 48 total things got merged over the last couple of weeks, and here are our top committers. Um, we actually had a lot of uh, interesting stuff from some old-time committers as too. Um, uh, Firepark, Christian uh, Mil Milmar uh, did a lot of stuff. Um, H.C. Moore um, did a lot of uh, interesting stuff, and we'll be talking about that a little bit later as well. Um, and uh, I think we had, you know, probably about two or three dozen committers over the last couple of weeks. So very, um, very active uh, community the last uh, sprint, and pretty happy to see it. Um, Google Summer Code Status. Uh, we actually started uh, hacking on things today. Um, everyone's really excited to go. Um, we have basically one month now to, to submit progress reports to Google and tell them how we're doing. But um, I think uh, everyone's got a whole lot of work to be done. And uh, uh, I think actually Metasploitable 3 is already off to the races like the last, past couple oh, yeah. of weeks. Yeah. Um, so pretty cool stuff there. Um, and this went right off the screen, didn't it? Um, but I'm just talking a little bit about some of the cool stuff that actually landed over the last couple of weeks. Um, last, last sprint demo, we talked about Eternal Blue exploit. Um, over the past two weeks, we've had three rounds of improvements, basically adding more target architectures, making it more reliable, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, over the last couple few days, we actually had a really cool uh, remote code execution um, bug in Samba, which is uh, basically an SMB provider for Linux and Unix systems. Um, and it's been around for about five or six years. Um, so it's in a lot of devices. Um, and in fact, uh, that is a picture of NAS inside of NAS. Um, <laughs> um, a whole lot of other really cool modules um, for, for doing uh, remote code execution or um, file uploads and that sort of thing. In fact, it's, it's kind of kind of a shame that we have so many modules here because it's just hard to talk about all of them. But uh, there's some really clever stuff, and, and you should definitely check it out. Um, in fact, we had so much stuff that landed um, over the last couple of weeks that I had to actually make three screens of it. Um, other, other kind of interesting things that happened were um, were uh, basically infrastructure type things. Um, auto route, which is a way that you can um, automatically add routes to remote um, networks based on what um, remote IPs are found um, via a pivoted host. Um, that now works on all interpreters. It used to only work on Windows. Um, we've added a whole bunch of cool new Docker improvements. Um, in fact, the, the Docker image itself is now half the size that it used to be, so it comes up a lot faster. Um, Harvard Bridge has been simplified and improved quite a bit. I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that, Pierce, on the work you did there. Um, you know, I'd like to, but I've forgotten it all after going to that training all week. So <laughs> okay. I, I, I literally landed that in a fries parking lot. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Um, and also, there's been some really awesome work from Jeffrey on credential storage simplification. Um, we have something called a credentials API, which allows you to store all kinds of um, things in, in the Metasploit uh, data model about where credential came from, how it was acquired. Um, but um, it can be a little bit difficult for module writers to use because there's a lot of sort of setup involved. And uh, Jeffrey added a new API that allows you to basically take, um, you know, uh, two dozen lines of code and turn it into just one. So some pretty cool stuff here, and, um, and we'll be seeing more of that as we go along. Other awesome stuff that landed over the last couple of weeks. Um, one is that uh, we now have the ability to inject um, module office uh, or office macros into arbitrary office documents, um, and that works. Um, I think. Uh, wait, does that work on um, LibreOffice, OpenOffice too, or just just um, Microsoft Office? Uh, which one, sorry? The ability to inject uh, macros into templates. That's specific for Microsoft. Office. Specific for Microsoft, but. Uh, but basically lets you, oh, and Google Docs too? Yeah. Oh, well, that's, that's really cool. I didn't realize that. Um, so uh, so basically, yeah, you can now basically create a, a really realistic template um, that would be, you know, something that someone would actually open and believe was real and inject payloads into it. Um, we're also doing some some work with upstream vendors. Um, you know, we, we have uh, a lot of people who package them as flight beyond just Rapid7. Uh, ParrotSec OS is one, and Kali Linux is another. And uh, we've been trying to make it so that users have a little bit easier time with those. And so for one thing that we've done is we actually worked with them to get MSF Update removed from Kali Linux. Main reason why is because Kali actually has a better update mechanism than MSF Update. So we basically deprecated it, and it will be gone in the next release. So that's good news there. Also, um, we added... Now, see if you can tell where I was going with this picture here. Um, Python stage retry support. 
You get it? It's Monty Python on the stage <laughs> doing a skit over. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so uh, there you go. So nifty stuff there. Now, if you have network connectivity problems, then your Python stage will automatically reload. Other stuff that's in the works right now. Um, there's an amazing uh, backup exec. I don't know if you guys were, were children of the 90s, but uh, if you remember back when we had backup tapes and PCs and that kind of thing, you need backup. Well, it turns out the software's still around, and there was a use after free bug, and uh, you can get a remote code execution. Um, yet another Windows 10 use after um, uh, uh, user access control bypass um, was, was added, and I think that's actually a, a still an O day after a couple weeks. Uh, so kind of neat stuff there. Um, we're working on getting macOS native interpreter actually packaged. It's been in source code for a while, but we haven't uh, really packaged it yet. But uh, Tim Wright did some work there to, to make it so we can actually generate uh, Mako binaries, and uh, so that should be working up soon. Something else that's really cool that got um, at least a, a PR right now is uh, something that allows you to mount a VMware image over a interpreter image. So effectively, if you get into someone's workstation and they have VMs running, you can then start snooping around inside their VMs directly. Um, so even if they're in use. So it's, it's a pretty nifty post-exploitation module, and look forward to seeing that uh, landing soon as well. I want to talk a little bit about some of the project-specific teams that we have within uh, Metasploit. Um, the A team um, generally consists of people who work a lot on framework and on modules and on testing. Um, and um, and wh while we all do that, uh, this is this the team tends to focus on that quite a bit. Um, a lot of PR landing. I think we had, um, like I said on the previous slide, uh, like 46 PRs were landed over the last couple of weeks. Um, we had a lot of SMB module enhancements. Uh, you know, the, the 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 Eternal Blue module got at least two or three different iterations of improvements and and uh, you know, reliability fixes. Um, of course, the Office Doc payload improvements, um, and then a lot of work on blogs and uh, you know, just basically building media support. I don't know if you checked out our YouTube channel. In fact, you may see this video on our YouTube channel, but uh, that's part of the things that the 18 has been working on. Um, Team Xenatos has been working on some some bigger picture items um, with regards to uh, one is making so the interpreter can do audio capture streaming. Um, uh, we got these first 64 bit Windows builds for Metasploit Pro out last release, and so uh, we've basically been working through uh, you know making sure that people are having easy upgrades with those. Um, Project Goliath coming along really well, um, adding uh, support for massive import data um, performance improvements. Um, you may have a demo of that today. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, we'll see. Um, and uh, a lot of extra work on Ruby SMB as well. Um, having it as part of uh, Eternal Blue has been a real big help for adding community interest to that. So, um, so uh, a lot of stuff being added there. Now it's time for the demos. <laughs> 